All right, Putin. There's uh, these are some primers. Um, I keep a lot of primers on hand. Uh, he's had you seen the powder I have, and uh, one thing I want to point out: you got regular primers, and you got Magnum primers, and you will actually have to adjust your load uh, when you're reloading if you're using Magnum primers. Now a lot of these things, um, like these are like the Winchesters for standard or Magnum loads for standard rifle loads. Now if you're using um, some of the primers though, like you might have to adjust and like if you're using a magnum primer, you might have to use a grain less of powder. Depends. But you know, I'm going to tell you right now, the stuff is still available. And the way I store this is I put them in plastic bags, make sure they're at room temperature, they're in a controlled environment, in other words, in low humidity, and then after it's in the plastic bags, um, I put them in a um, like a rubber made container and they are safe to store there's no there's no problem with storing primers but uh, you know some people freak out about everything but you know I'll actually have thousands of them over here so and you know I'm gonna tell you I went online and I looked up you could still get them I mean most places are saying you know they're not available but they're still available so I would suggest to people you know if you don't have this stuff, get some more of it. And these things will last for a lot of years. So, you know, I've always kept a good stash of stuff on hand. And I keep a lot of ammo on hand and that type of stuff. But a lot of people just aren't prepared. And, you know, they panic at the last minute. But uh, these are, you know, these are good to go. So, you know, you got to keep the stuff on hand. And it's not that simple. Uh, it's not that, you know, complicated to reload stuff, too. So, it's not a big deal you have this type of stuff on hand it's a lot less room than keeping loaded ammunition because the primer the proud the powder and the projectiles they don't just take up that much room it's the brass that takes up the room so you can recycle everything it's no big deal but uh, you know I got thousands of this stuff here and that's, that's just how I do it so you know I don't know if I should put this out on the internet but you know these are all full boxes except for these two these are like half full but these are all full boxes of primers so you know and I just like I said it's still available on the internet I found them man no problem at all yeah the one thing you can get right now besides night uh, you can get the projectiles usually pretty easy and uh, you can get cheap stuff like this these are just plain old uh, nine millimeter wad cutters these are the 223 55 grain they're soft points. They're cheap. I mean, you can, you know, look a whole, there's like 500 in one of these little boxes. It's nothing. Uh, something else I do. See these 35 cal, uh, 180 grain. Uh, these are actually for the 35 Remington lever action. Now I have a 357 Marlin lever action, which takes the 357 uh, pistol bullet. Well, you can do a special load with uh, 35 Remington, 180 grain bullet, but you know projectile, and that's what the beauty of reloading. And you can just put it in for your first shot. It's too long to feed through with your 357 lever, but for your first shot, or if you drop them in one at a time, you just made your 357 lever a lot more potent. You can actually nail some pretty good sized game with it. Now, one thing you can get now is a lot of the reloading components and these are some of the, these are I think these are pretty much well they're most of them yeah it's probably all of them all the reloading I dies I have for all the various calibers and uh, you know it has like the full length sizing tool the shell holder I don't use this thing actually I use the uh, automatic uh, powder dump you know it dumps the there's like a measured amount it goes in there it's like a little manufacturing process on a three stage reloading press uh, the bullet seeder and but you know I'm gonna tell you this thing uh, where you can measure it you got to be exact you got to use the manual you know I use the spear reloading manual that's the one I use but this can work fine yeah if you're using the right powder for what particular size round you're using but I would recommend this get a scale like this so check you know 
check some of these, like and once you check a bunch of these, you know, several of these, and you realize, you know, this thing is scooping out the right amount of grains of powder, then you're okay. Then you're okay. Then you can just scoop this out and you'll you could dump this in each one of your rounds. I know I'm not really showing it, but you know, right now you can still get these reloading dies, and I would suggest getting them now. You know, people stacking silver and whatever. Get reloading stuff. I mean, hell, I don't see how it's not going to go. It's going to go down in value. And these are, uh, these, I'm not going to pull them all out. These are different sizing dies. Like, in other words, the case on a uh, cartridge, the length of it can get elongated. Sometimes you have to cut it down, so you'll use different things to uh, measure it, and you can cut it down if the case is too long. The brass itself, so these are uh, sizing for, you know, case length sizing dies and stuff. But this type of stuff I would get now because it's all available. And this is something else you should stack, you know. I'm telling you, you should be stacking this type of stuff besides, you know, worrying about precious metals every two seconds. Um, you know, Vernier Caliber. Now, you notice my Vernier Caliber's got the old school dial on it. Well, I bought this a while ago, but you know what? I don't trust anything digital. I'll tell you the truth, I just do not trust digital stuff. I like it when you pick this damn thing up you turn it you see the do it that that kind of stuff and uh but it's good for like mechanical work too besides you know reloading and bullets and stuff and there's actually a number of things you can get you get head space gauges go no go gauges for head space checking on a rifle i would stack this type of stuff now like i said i highly recommend the ar-15 but you know a lot of people like the ak but hey, you know, like and a lot of people don't reload to have the AK-47 type rifle because it's, uh, you know, the ammo is cheap. They got these steel case ammo and it's so cheap it's practically like, you know, you don't save hardly anything reloading. The problem is with that stuff, first off, if you can't get it, you're going to be screwed. In other words, you can keep a lot of these projectiles around and stuff like that, powder, and it's, and it's like a lot less space than uh, loaded ammunition and number two is you can make a lot of different rounds other than the stupid military rounds because the military rounds are only good for like one thing you know military applications there's a lot of different loads you can load or experiment with and make the rifle more versatile so that's the point of reloading and you know getting back to analog gauges you notice like my scale <laughs> same deal and you know I, I I'm just like this because you know, I don't even like the freaking torque wrenches they use on cars that have the click. I got some of those. I always use the beam style. I don't like that stupid thing with the click because, you know, I don't know. You got to wait for it to click, and then I could see the beam going up on the scale. I don't know. I just don't like that shit. I'm old school, but a lot of times I realize old tech. And, you know, I got to keep that, keep that in mind with all this rifle crap. Don't worry about every G-Wiz laser sight bullshit thing that's out there just stick with the basics and um you know if you if you know you're one of these people i don't know this is a cool little sport though i mean i don't really think of it as survival i think of it like golf you know some people are nuts on golf with freaking golf clubs i mean this is very this is more technical than golf i think so it's more interesting so you know if you want to stack something this is a cool thing to get into and you know it's the primers like i said they're still available the powder's still available no no premiums on the price you might have to wait a couple weeks but there's still place you can get it so and if you keep it nice stored nice safe place cool dry no problem it'll last for years but you know in the meantime you know if you you should get if you don't you're not into reloading i, I say you stack some of this stuff it's a money saver and, you know, when you go shooting, it doesn't cost you as much money when you reload. So, this is a smart thing to stack. Like I said, I got all these different calibers over here and stuff. So, that's what I do. So, anyway. Something else to do besides uh, stacking silver. I think you should be stacking uh, ammo, bullets, primers, projectiles, uh, scales, um, Bernier calibers, um, reloading dies. You know, size the things that to, to size the case length, and that type of stuff. So, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So, this is a smarter thing to stack besides just silver and gold.